Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Rob. I'm your host at RV Talk Radio. Thank you very much for listening today. Oh my goodness, did we have quite a week. So, you probably don't realize it from the videos and stuff, but we actually are on the move. We're actually headed south. And uh, we're working our way to Las Vegas and then down to Arizona. So, I got some real interesting news from that trip, but uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So I need to warn you right away that you're going to hear some sounds in the background because I am in Vegas and we're staying at a place called the Oasis RV Park. It's a gigantic five-star resort for RVs and it has a lot of airplanes flying (laughs) and uh, I'll tell you more about this park in a little bit, but uh, lots of traffic here. It's kind of a busy place, so there will be some sounds in the background because, especially of the airplanes going over the top, this is one busy town. And so, what I want to do is start off with talking about contacting us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, don't forget. You can go to RV Talk Radio, go to our contact page, and if you have anything on your mind, just go to the contact page, fill out the information, shoot it, and uh, you won't get any junk mail or anything like that, no spamming, all that. But if you have questions, products, concerns, just let us know. And you can also email me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. We'd love to hear from you. Also, when we make the video version of this show, Feel free to just leave uh, information on the comments. I also (laughs) need to remind you, we do have a Facebook page at our um, RV Travel Buddy, which uh, has lots of members. Please feel free to tell us about your RV and your trips and all that. Share pictures with us and videos. We love it. We also have a group page for RV Talk Radio. Once again, uh, when you go there, you have to join. It has to be RV related stuff. Make sure that you uh, give us, show us some pictures of your site or where you're going or some recommendations and products you like. That's what that group page is all about. That's RV Talk Radio at Facebook or RV Travel Buddy Facebook. Feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. We also have a newsletter that you can sign up for free at RVTalkRadio.com. Just go to the site. Off to the right, you see a little space there. Just put your email address in there. I will assure you, it you will not get spammed. It will only send emails to you when there's an update to the website. And uh, basically, you'll get an email once a week when the new shows come out. You can unsubscribe at any time. So just go to rvtalkradio.com. Go to the right-hand side of the page, and you will see a newsletter space there just put your name i uh, actually just put your email address in there and you're automatically set up and when you get an email if you don't like it just unsubscribe and and, and you might want to check your junk mail at first uh sometimes that kind of newsletters tend to sh- shoot off to junk mail I'll just go in there and say this is not junk put it into my normal inbox we also have some really cool stuff that we love to offer you guys it's uh we have stickers uh, they are designed to be in the outside of your car or RV in the window. One's for RV Talk Radio. The other one is for RV Travel Buddy. They're both really nice stickers. They look really good. We only charge $5. <laughs> we don't make any money from them, really. Maybe 50 cents to a dollar. But uh, they help support the, the site, all the things that we're doing. We... Uh, Always love donations and help like that. It's all the all goes towards the equipment and and all the audio equipment and things we do. Our servers. We actually host our own websites and stuff. Uh, believe me, it take a heck of a lot of stickers before we could even break <laughs> break even. 
So it's not really about that, but we just, uh, if you like what we're doing, it's, it's kind of like offering us a tip. If we've done a good job and you enjoy what Rob and Sherry do uh, and our attitudes and things like that and what we present to you, uh, please, if you get a chance, uh, down below in the description, we have links to our stickers. Uh, if you can also off to the side on RV Talk Radio, you'll see we have a donation button. That's just like a tip. That's all. Um, we're not in trouble. We're not financially in tr having any issues. It's just a tip jar. And we just appreciate uh, that those funds go straight into the account of Cutting Edge Enterprises, which is our uh, corporation that actually controls all this stuff. And it just helps. That's all. So if you get a chance, get yourself a sticker. Just hit the little link. Go see what they look like. They're really nice. We sell, just mail them to you. Sometimes we put some extra stuff in there because we just love getting the support from you guys. And last but not least, we also have our famous cinder stuffed dogs. And I think we have them on sale for $19.95. They, once again, it's just to raise money for the company. And, and it's like a big tip, but the, the, the dogs are cheap, uh, really cute. And... Uh, what we'd like people to do with those is if you're doing photography or videos is if you get a chance Put little cinder in the pictures and put them in the background or put her in the background. So uh, In all the different places that you go make sure you shoot us a little note so we can see where the cinder is and uh, if we see a video or a photo with cinder in it uh, we also make sure and kind of advertise for you and put it on all of our Facebooks and kind of make a big deal about it because it's kind of fun. So those are the things going on here at RV Talk Radio. We thanks for the support. Don't forget to get a newsletter. And don't forget to watch all of our stuff at RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest, which is my wife and I. And uh, we have a new video coming out showing one of our, our disasters. Come, and I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. One of the last things I wanted to bring up before I talk about our uh, adventure coming down here to Las Vegas is I want to remind you to give a application that you can put on your phone called Go Mechanic. It's an application that uh, I almost had to test it, <laughs> which I'll tell you our story a little bit. Almost had to use it. Uh, but Go Mechanic is a application you can put down on your cell phone. And what it's designed to do is bring mechanics and help to you. They come to you. It's not it's not a uh, application just to find stuff. It's designed to get mobile people to come to your RV or your uh, auto, your, your truck or car. And like, you know, you get in an RV park and you get all settled in and all that take down and move in your RV. And especially if you're living in it, in it maybe you have a cracked windshield or you got something, an uh, issue with tires, things like that. Uh, Go Mechanic is a great application that you can, uh, that will locate those kind of people anywhere you go. You just tell them what area you're in or zip code that you're in and it will tell you all the local mobile mechanics that or services that will come to you for your RV or auto. So once again, Go Mechanic, you can go to their website at gomechanic.us and you'll get more information about the application. We also want to remind you, <laughs> and I cannot stress enough because I'm going to tell you a story that's going to go with this. Don't forget to get some protection for your RV. And believe me, I my next story coming up will uh, <laughs> support what I'm talking about. Uh, Good Sam extended warranty service or service plan. It's not a warranty, but service plan that will protect you when you're especially traveling and you're in a strange land. Uh, it is designed to support mechanical issues that you have on the road and all the major RV centers will support it and believe me it's like well you basically a deductible type thing and then you could easily have a thousand or two thousand dollar bill from some things that could happen and all you have to do is pay your deductible it's a great plan so once again down in the description of our show here 
please take the time to go over and get a free quote. And if you get a free quote from our link, you'll also get a free $10 Camping World certificate just for getting a quote uh, from these folks. And it's uh, with Good Sam. So please, down in the description, go down, click on the link, go to our site at RV Talk Radio, click on the link that says click here, and it takes you over to a quote form. That form is free. And once you fill it out and get a quote, you will also get a $10 gift certificate from Camping World. It's worth it. Now to get back to my story, <laughs> so which is our trip south. So Sherry and I, we came down from Washington with the Central Oregon. We're actually in Central Oregon for almost six weeks. So yeah, it was a long time when uh, it was kind of good because it gave us a chance to streamline a few processes we had to fix on our uh, RV and we had to fix some items on our RV and we had to order a lot of stuff. And so being at Sherry's folks house, we were at their property, we we're actually kind of semi boondocking. We did have power, but uh, we were there to get a lot of things working the way we wanted to. We got some pack, we got, well, we got the uh, new camera we'll tell you about that we ordered and just a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, uh, especially, uh, we also got a waste tank that we needed to get uh, to help support us when we're boondocking, stuff like that. So anyway, but we're not there anymore. So we left a few days ago and started heading south because we were actually working our way towards Arizona eventually. And the one thing we noticed is it's, you know, it's only March. It's amazing how many of the snowbirds were coming back up already. And I thought, boy, we're coming from yucky weather. And it's like, it seems a little early. So I was amazed at how it was a lot of RVers coming back north already from snowbirding. And it's like, Gosh, guys, I would have waited about one more month if I was you. But anyways, so I guess the best thing about that is since I'm going south, it makes lots of openings for the RV uh, parking. So I, I can't complain. So the first place we went was uh, Lakeview, Oregon. And I kind of have to laugh about that place because we're just getting into Lakeview. And I knew, and I've seen it before, there was a, kind of a little RV park off to the right about 12 miles before you get to Lakeview, Oregon on the north side. And I always wanted to kind of stay there. And uh, so we're traveling along and there it was. And definitely it was uh, uh, nothing fancy, but still kind of nice. So we pull in there and we drive up and this lady who's actually living in a camper, was the host there, came out. And she was really, really nice. And she goes, wow, it's $20 to stay here uh, unless you uh, don't need uh, septic and all that stuff. Uh, and it, it's only 15 And I said, oh, great. And so I started getting cash. And uh, I only had like $13 in cash. I said I had a couple 20s. I wasn't broke. But anyway, I didn't have enough to have 15 even. And I was going to give her a 20 and say, yeah, you can give me change later. She goes, oh, no, 13 is fine. <laughs> this is, we don't have water right now anyway, which I didn't need water. And because uh, everything is still really cold up there, so they had everything shut off. And uh, really all we wanted was power and to sleep tonight, and we didn't want to spend a lot of money. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was like, oh, yeah, 13 bucks, go park. And so that was it. So we got back on the road the next morning, started chugging along. And we're going to uh, Hawthorne, which actually we you had to go through Reno first. But before we got to Reno, we stopped at a rest area in Susanville to have lunch and chill out and let the dog have a walk and get relieved and all that. And then a disaster happened. Well, it wasn't a big disaster, but it was a very sad day. So what happened is we had to open a few slides so we could get around in the RV so we could have lunch in this uh, parking uh, rest area kind of area. And apparently our remote, which was up on the shelf above the kitchen table kind of thing, 
anyway, must have fell down and it was along the edge of the slide. And when we opened the slide, the remote was in there. As we were closing it, we crushed it. That sounded terrible. We hear this big crunch. It's like, oh my gosh, what did we do? Anyway, we get up in there and add the thing. I mean, it was not, it wasn't even a way to put it back together. It was demolished. So luckily it was for our television and not for our dish network. <laughs> so the first little thing that happened on the trip was crushed remote. So as we're chugging along towards uh, Reno, we got through there okay, not too big, big of problems, and then shot across over to Fallon, uh, Nevada, and started heading, to, and was like, all right, we're doing pretty good time here. Let's go ahead to Hawthorne, Nevada. Wow, did we hit some wind uh, by Williams Lake. It was definitely a nail biter. So uh, we we're kind of traveling along there. I probably held no more than 50 miles per hour. I'm sure I had a few folks upset with me, but it was pretty gusty. And we get to the place there, and uh, no problem. I had a nice RV park there. We are able to, uh, and by the way, so now that we have Dish Network, uh, some places want to charge you more for cable service. And since we have Dish, we're able to save a few bucks now. So I think uh, what was normally going to be $29, we got for $27 because they knocked off two bucks because no, uh, we didn't need cable. So that was kind of cool. And uh, uh, we had a really big windy storm. I mean, nasty. We uh, going through that place and, and rainstorm and clouds. And, and the video that we took of this trip, uh, we captured some of a really pretty sky, but still eerie and scary. And so anyway, but it was not too bad at Hawthorne there. So then the next day, we started our trip to Vegas and that would be about a seven to eight hour trip so we got a pretty good start when uh, started travel along we had really no real issues uh, we got to <laughs> I still laughed there's a place you get gas so it's about a hundred miles out of Vegas and you stop and get diesel there they're actually not too bad a price filled up the tank and the funniest thing there is good old Nevada you never know what you're going to see, but it's a gas station and brothel at the same place. I believe they call it Area 51. It's like, really? <laughs> what? Out of nowhere, diesel gas and a brothel. It's like, I I know they've been there for years, so it's like, what the heck? I guess uh, you can get your fill up there. Totally. So right after that, we leave all fueled up. Traveling along, kind of getting excited because we're getting close to Vegas. About, uh, I think we're about 60 miles out, and we're going up a hill about 60 miles per hour, and bang! I mean, explosion! I, wow, just scared the heck out of us. And yes, we blew a tire on the fifth wheel at about 60 miles per hour, and it just disintegrated. I looked out the, just captured a little bit of it. And all I could see was a tread and all that stuff. And I'm pulling over. A slow. But amazingly enough, uh, I did not feel like I didn't have control of the rig at all. Uh, it just bang, and you could feel a shimmy. And we're slowed down real quick. Got uh, Luckily, I had sh <laughs> uh, room uh, to pull over. And I could actually stay on the concrete or even go even farther into the gravel, which I actually went into the gravel. And thank goodness we did that because uh, I'll explain that in a minute. So that thing, when it exploded, it took my fender off. I mean, it was, I never did find the plastic piece. It was blown off, but, uh, and then there was a panel kind of blown off, but it was made of metal. So, wow. So two issues. One is a flat tire, which is disintegrated. I mean, this thing was a mess, and you can see that in the video. And... Also, I've got to repair the RV enough to transport without problems with the this. I had to actually a piece of metal kind of flap it around, which was underneath the plastic fender that blew off. And I never could find it. I went down the road. I could not find it. Uh, it must have. Uh, anyway, it, dis, it looks like it disintegrated anyway. So this is our dilemma. Here we are. 
and we actually did not know exactly where we were. We were somewhere between, uh, well, we knew we were 60 miles out about, of 60 to 70 miles out of Vegas, and there was really nothing out there. So we thought, well, maybe we should call a roadside. And so we started making a few phone calls and we realized that this was a disaster. It's like, you know, Sherry and I, we really can fix this. We do have a spare. We just got to figure a few things out. So finally, we just, no, we're not going to. And by the way, this is like 4 o'clock in the evening. So we had to make sure and kind of hustle because we're going to lose sunlight. So the biggest dilemma was lifting the RV up off the, off the side. So what's really good about the Montana fifth wheel is they use, we have hydraulic lifts or levelers and so all we had to do was uh, well we had to kind of figure it out but get a p uh, we had big blocks of wood as much as we could get under the levelers which was you know they're still not that far from the ground so we got a big block and a couple of shimmy blocks under there and we actually were able to get the lifters to just work on one side um and so we actually built up at the as much wood underneath the lifters on that one, one particular side, put the hydraulics in and turn it on, you know, turn on the hydraulics. And by gosh, if it, that thing didn't get it almost off the ground, it was just like a fraction from off the ground, which was better than what I could have done with any kind of a, a jack. So since the tire was totally exploded in, in, in pieces, we, already, we said, we can get this tire off. So we went ahead and took the legs off. And at the same time, we also took the spare off, which is underneath the RV, which you just turn a crank and it drops it to the ground. So that was a piece of cake. So we got our spare. And we were able to get the tire off just fine because it was flat. So it's like, all right, we know we're off the ground barely with a tire on there. How do we get the tire off? back on so two things we let the air out of the t out of the spare tire um and because we have a compressor with us and by the way we use one of those Vier compressors awesome compressors and i uh, didn't have trouble getting power because i just took it off the deep cell batteries off of the trailer and hooked up the Vier to that so we let the air out of the spare and we dug a hole under um with a shovel where the spare tire, where that tire is going to be replaced, so we have some space to get the tire on. So <laughs> I'm digging a hole. Sherry's letting the air out, and uh, uh, by gosh, if we didn't get that spare on there, that worked just fine. Got it on there, tightened up our lugs uh, as best we could. It was actually loose and turning by then, and then uh, let the uh, oh, and then uh, before. We put air back in the tire before we put pressure on, uh, put the tire, the rig back down on the ground. So we took the uh, pressure up to 75 pounds, which recommended is 80 pounds. We just didn't want to push it. And that little compressor, that's a lot of uh, work for it just to do 80, uh, 75 pounds. So then we dropped it, put weight on it, and then double checked to make sure every lug was tight. Uh, the kind of final final check. Sherry was actually over my shoulder, making sure I didn't miss any lugs. And you know, <laughs> anyway, so we got her down. And then the next thing was we had to repair the siding because we had this big piece of sheet metal kind of loose. The the fender part that which was made out of fiberglass was totally gone. So I grabbed a couple of sheet metal sheet metal screws and. Uh, bent all the, uh, that flap or that sheet metal back to where it should be. And of course, all screws and stuff. Luckily, I have, you know, I have wood behind there. So I actually took a hammer to kind of start the, the screws because I had to get it. I didn't have a drill and uh, tapped it with a hammer, got it through the metal, tightened them up and it went into the wood just fine. And actually it was solid, just nice and solid. So <laughs> And then Sherry ran up and got the Gorilla Tape, which is white, thank goodness, because that's everything was white. And kind of, we wanted to make sure that we kind of closed it up, make sure we didn't have any uh, openings where air could get in there and kind of try to push that off. Anyway, it came out actually kind of <laughs> nice, considering I just blew the fender off. And uh, so we put the screws in, we put the 
Gorilla Tape on there, looked just fine, kind of inspected everything, had kind of fragments of a little bit of fiberglass kind of st stuff that we had to trim with scissors to get, make sure you didn't get any axle, just everything looked good, and by gosh, we, uh, we did it. And so, the big thing I want to talk about on, on the whole thing was, it was scary, and we were, you could feel the anxiety, because we knew, you know, like, we're out nowhere, and if we don't get this tire change we're going to be here in the dark and we're in a place where we don't know where we're at so i got a comment about the main thing we noticed on the whole emergency and that was listening to each other yeah i know that sounds funny but listening to each other one is i know that some people say oh it's a guy's problem and the wife just waits for it to be fixed so it wasn't like that at all it was total teamwork Sherry had some brilliant ideas. I had great ideas. And when you combine the two ideas to get over this, the issue that we had, she was blowing out ideas. I was too. And like, oh, that'd work. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's try that. And without us cooperating and communicating, it could have been uh, <laughs> a really a bad ordeal. But it wasn't. Once we kind of got in the in the mode we kind of got a, in a, a mojo going of, of let's get this resolved and fixed we were cooking and we were pulling tools out pulling and putting things away as we we're done cooperating totally fixing the uh, working with ideas of how to fix the fender at the same time how we got the tire off digging the hole all these different ideas were just flowing and man we were we had mojo going man it was amazing so I think if I was going to say is if you have a disaster like that, first thing is calm down. Say, what can you do and what can't you do? And uh, if you need emergency roadside service, so be it. But uh, you could be waiting for hours. So if you can do the work, great. Uh, and Sherry and I kind of like, we used to do a lot of stuff, you know, mechanically. But as we gotten older, we kind of like thought we couldn't do some of that stuff anymore. Well, that's not true. We... We nailed it. So Sherry and I both kind of just want to pass on to people that we listened to each other. We calmed down and rationally got through the problem. And uh, our biggest concern was getting it all done before it got dark. And by gosh, we got it all done, got on the road, and it was starting to be dusk, and it was starting to get dark. I think, you know, for that last 60 miles, of course, you're just like, okay, I need all these tires to hold together because I don't have a spare anymore because I blew it up. Um, so it was kind of a nail biter till we got to Vegas. What we're going to do now is I haven't been real happy with the tires we got because remember when we bought this RV, it was already a year old, but um, it was amazing. I, I got a feeling the dealership made a switch some tires out and stuff because they weren't that good at tires. So we're just going to go over, and here's why I keep talking about emergency money and stuff, and we, we're prepared for this kind of stuff. We're just going to stop at a, I guess down here it's discount tires or something like that. We're going to make arrangements. We're going to be down here for a week, but when we leave here, we're not going to do nothing. We're going to relax for the next seven days. But then we're going to go to a tire center and just switch out brand new, all four tires in the RV, get our peace of mind and warranty on the tires and get our spare put back on and just, I, I don't want that to happen. I, I've never had a tire blowout on a t uh, trailer ever. This was the first time for me and I don't want to go through that again ever. So I'm going to get some good tires. I'm going to drop a thousand bucks, I'm sure. And that's just how it is. But uh, I knew this kind of stuff was going to happen. Once again, that's talking about getting prepared. And that's why we keep talking about this uh, kind of stuff on the show. It's like, oh, no, it never happens to the hot shots or people are doing these shows and stuff. Oh, I have news for you. Uh, it happens to a lot of people. And, it's, and when it happens to us, at least we can share it with you and tell you what we learned, lessons learned. The big part was... We spent a lot of research being prepared. And if we didn't have our Vier compressor, that wouldn't have worked. We have a really good uh, Gorilla Tape. Uh, that's better than duct tape, by the way, I think. Good stuff. Um, 
keeping spare screws and nuts and bolts with you, tools. Uh, we had everything we needed. We just had to kind of engage. Even a shovel. <laughs> it's like a silly little shovel. Thank God we had that shovel. So, guys, this is the time. If you haven't started traveling yet, getting prepared, uh, being uh, ready for emergencies. This was a prime example of what could happen and how a good story could come out of it. Now let me talk about where we're at. We are at a place called the Oasis RV Resort. It is a five, well they say it's a five star RV resort. It's not a cheap place and I told you guys that we uh, we'd always try to save money. Uh, we do things, uh, try to be fugal when we can, but we also like luxuries. So this place has got 600 to 900 sites, somewhere like that. It's a gigantic place. And we've been here before. We love this place in Vegas. It's called the Oasis RV Resort. And uh, we got a premium site, so we're paying, we got a weekly special, but it's around 50 bucks a day. And what you get for that is everything, uh, as far as hookups and a cable, the whole works. Nice uh, facilities. Uh, this place is a busy, busy place. Oh my gosh, it's uh, that big. Uh, where our RV is actually right by the main gate, which we've been in this spot before. And it's amazing how much traffic goes in and out of this place and uh, all the services, everything you can think of. In fact, we're gonna have our RV washed and cleaned uh, here because uh, I, they got people that really do good job and uh, uh, They got a pool to die for hot tub to die for Their community center actually has events as a regular thing uh, along with a Texas Oldham sh uh, Game that they have which I got to go try. I think it's like a $25 buy-in and just go have some fun this is Sin City, this is Vegas, and Sherry and I do go to casinos. We do like shows. We're gonna make sure we go to some of the national parks and the outside, but we're gonna do use this place as, our, our, as a pivot point to go to all these places. So that's what we like about this, is it's really comfortable, has good facilities for your pets. Uh, it's a big facility, it's clean, professional, and you do have to abide by the rules because with this big a place, you just can't have any rebels. So when you get a chance, just uh, type in Oasis RV Resort in Nevada and take a look at this facility. It's really nice. Uh, once again, they don't even know we're here. Kind of just snuck in. Uh, it's a great facility. Check them out. They certainly don't need our advertising. This place is a busy, busy place. And it looks like a lot of the snowbirds are kind of coming up from Yuma and kind of swinging by here, which is making this place exceptionally busy right now. So, and uh, they have weddings here and stuff like that too because the facilities are gigantic. So, anyway, the Oasis RV Resort. Check it out. I would like to take the time to thank uh, folks for their comments and uh, contacting us we'd love to hear from you and uh, last week I talked about the new um, uh, Toten store 25 gallon waste tank we bought and somebody asked uh, in the comments why uh, did you buy 25 you got a 50 gallon tank and the reason being is yeah it's very true and a lot of times sometimes you just want to relieve the tanks you don't have to empty them totally but um, if a gray tank's getting a little high or uh, uh, there is a way to balance them if you do that. But if you're, we we're sitting in uh, Central Oregon for a long time. And so we we're getting concerned about the black tank. We want to relieve it a little bit. If I can relieve uh, 10, 20, 25 gallons of it and don't have to worry about a full dump before we get on the road, uh, that's what it's for. So the other problem is, is if you have a tank like that, it's got you got to have a place to put it. Uh, so in the back of my truck, I'm telling you, I was pushing it. I didn't, wasn't even sure. I thought maybe it was going to be too big and I wasn't able to fit, but it fits and I'm not having any trouble with the hitch on the fifth wheel, uh, any bigger than I would. I, I thought maybe I should have bought the 18, but the 25 is fitting, uh, in the truck just fine. Uh, it, I can move it uh, with those four wheels on it. And I move it around really easy when we are putting the, uh, 
RV back on the art truck. So it's turned out to be good. So that's why we have the 25 gallon. I can't go any bigger because I wouldn't have any room to carry it. Uh, two is, uh, the other thing is if you fill that thing with liquid, you're looking at 200 pounds there and stuff. And, and even though you have wheels and stuff, it also depends on where you're at. You can be in gravel, loose gravel, things like that. And those are bare to roll. So keep that in mind when you're buying one of those tanks. Uh, it's nothing wrong with going smaller than 25. Uh, 10 to 18 is a good uh, uh, size that you can keep in the back of your truck and still have room for other boxes. So that's why we bought that. The other thing I was going to let you guys know is we definitely got the new Canon G40 camera in. And it's all that <laughs> I was expecting. It's a nice camera. So we actually have made a few videos to tell you a little bit about it. We are starting to film with it a little bit. Uh, we definitely like it. Um, it's a cool camera. And so I'll try to point out in the videos when we're using it. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I was going to let you know is uh, dur during this week, we're going to do our best to do reports on what's going on in Vegas here that uh, we like to do. Uh, any surprises we have or, um, I, you know, you never, you just can't make this stuff up, guys. It just happens. So we'll make sure to uh, report to you by next week what's been going uh, what we've done in vegas here it's really hard to get these shows done and be on the move too so uh bear with us sometimes we have to make our shows a little shorter than an hour uh it's because of just the time crunch and so i'm actually recording this on a sunday afternoon which means i have to render it and have it ready to go and upload it tonight so it'll launch for you guys on monday morning by five o'clock in the morning and we also make a video version up. So it's two major uploads we do. So we're really crunched for time in this particular show. And I, I, I probably have been kind of talking fast. And I apologize. But uh, I, I, well, I can see we're still like 37 minutes into the show. So we are, this will not be an hour show, I don't think. So what do we plan after this? We're actually going to start heading towards Arizona. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is get over by Kingston and then we want to go see that and I, you know I don't like heights but I got to go see that glass house thing or porch that they made over the Grand Canyon and I've got to stand on it and just you know have a heart attack whatever it's gonna anyway so uh, we have a goal to try to get there so we're gonna do our best and then from there I think we're gonna get down to uh, near the Sedona area and hang out a little bit and what we're trying to do is get close to Phoenix because Sherry needs to do uh, uh, one week contract work down in Phoenix and then come back. And then we still have uh, some free time up there. So we'll be up by Sedona, uh, goofing off, and then we'll kind of make it up from there. But uh, I can't, I don't know everything. And that's what's nice about this kind of lifestyle is you can wing it as we go. So that's the plans. As the week's been going, we just got all kinds of crazy stuff going on, and so we're going to start wrapping up this show. <laughs> so, I think I'm losing it here. But I do want to take the time to thank everybody for listening. And I need to remind you that this is a real podcast. And yes, I know you see the video, and a lot of people like the video version, but if you're a podcast listener, you can listen to us on your cell phone. And we are registered with iTunes and all the other podcast directories. And you can actually put a little app on your phone. And I use Podcast Addict. And all you have to do is type in RV Talk Radio and poof, you'll see our show. And then you can actually put in your headphones and listen to us because we are a radio station or a radio show, a podcast. And so, so many ways you can listen to us. You can go to through your phone. You can go to YouTube and listen to us or go directly to our website at rvtalkradio.com and listen to the show from there. So lots of way to listen, but boy, if you can enjoy a podcast and what's really cool about podcasting and getting the application is if you have other interests, and I'm sure you do, it's not just all RVs. Maybe you like guns or maybe you like camping or maybe you like hiking. 
maybe you like uh, n- uh, quilting, whatever it is, there is a podcast about it. I can guarantee it. And then there's this news radio type stuff. And uh, so even Bill Burr, I believe it, I don't listen to him, but uh, he does a video and a podcast on a regular basis. So we're up there with all the big boys doing a real, real podcast. And, and if you get a chance, put that application on your cell phone and you can listen up all kinds of podcasts and you'll, you'll enter into a new world you probably never dis- uh, discovered before podcasts through your cell phone give it a try it's worth it and and not just our show all the other shows and there is a handful of other rv sh- podcasts out there and they're all great it just depends on what kind of uh i don't know what platform you're looking for but yeah, they're all good, and I recommend all of them. So please take the time to subscribe, either through our podcast on your cell phone or subscribe to us through YouTube. Uh, also, if you would take the time to like our videos or like our podcast when you can. And please, I beg of you, please share us with the, your friends and family and let us uh, let them know that we're out here. We need, you know, we always need your help. So if you get a chance to go to our YouTube, would you please subscribe to our show? Tell people about us. We're working as hard as we can to put a good show together. And of course, we want your feedback. Tell us what you think is good and what uh, you'd like to see in the show, what we could improve on, uh, constructive feedback. We always love that and we appreciate it. So. I'm Rob, your host today. Thank you so much for listening. We're here at Vegas. See what kind of fun stuff we can talk about. I'm grateful for you, and I'm grateful we made it here in one piece. And I hope we shared some good information with you. So from RV Talk Radio, thanks for listening. Be safe. Talk to you next Monday. Bye now. Bye now.